Cynics on Disney podcast contains adult language. Listener discretion is advised. This is the Cynics on Disney podcast, presented by Nightclub33.com. Welcome into this week's episode of the Cynics on Disney podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, a.k.a. the Disney Cynic. And I'm Amanda, a.k.a. the Anti-Cynic. And today we are going to continue our tour of Italy via Disney, so, so to speak, I guess. We're, we're, we're going to eat at a, yet another Italian restaurant on Disney property. And actually this time... I changed things up a little bit. I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we are excited, I think, to get to this one because <laughs> this this is just like another restaurant at the parks that can be maligned. Um, it's, it's just one of those like meh restaurants to me. Um it's never been offensive, but then again, I think everybody's always scared me off of eating here. So I think yeah. it was a good thing that we tried it out. I am talking, of course, about Mama Melrose's over in Disney's Hollywood Studios. <laughs> that is the name of it, right? It is Mama Melrose's. Oh, thank Rest- God. Rest- yep, you are correct. <sighs> Do you know how much I had the ABBA song stuck in my head, like leading up to Mamma Mia? Death? Yes. <laughs> like not even like the musical Mamma Mia, just right. the, just, just the, song. the song, just the song from ABBA. Yeah. yeah. And great. I get it. Now I have other songs from ABBA stuck in my head. Okay, Thanks a lot. I, are they? I like ABBA. Well, I mean, I, I think everybody thinks ABBA, I, it's it's a guilty pleasure, right? I like ABBA. I also enjoyed <laughs> the millennial version of ABBA known as A-Teens. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, this has gotten weird as hell. Um, and gone in a direction I did not see us going in. <laughs> Yes, let us let us talk about and we don't have Pat this time to derail I know. us. We're just gonna derail ourselves. I know, I know. Amanda. Yeah. You are the uh professor laureate of this year podcast. Um what pray tell kind of history is there on Mama Mia's Melrose? Um Mama Melrose's. Yeah. Uh, so I had to kind of like dig for some of, for for this. Um, it was it was a little hard to find. Even like the opening date, I had to kind of dig for. Um, so I thought it had opened at the same time as the park did. Nope, nope. It opened in September. It opened September twenty sixth, nineteen ninety one. So about two years after. Okay, so it's not an opening day thing, but it is like a phase one of Hollywood Studios. Now, it is, for those of you that don't know, this is located next to Muppet Vision 3D. And it seems really like an out of place thing because you've got Muppet Vision and now you've got Pizza Rizzo and now you have this Italian restaurant that has nothing to do with the Muppets. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I would also note that it it being an Italian restaurant right next to a shitty pizza restaurant, also like what? Why? Why are we doing like all of this? Yeah. Well, thank you to the website mouseplanet dot com. I was able to get some background information that I did not know about this restaurant. Um, okay. And basically. There's like a whole backstory to who Mama Melrose is and all that. And I'll get into that in a minute, maybe. But <laughs> this wasn't supposed to be um, Mama Melrose's Italian restaurant. <laughs> okay. Um, 
This was supposed to be a Muppet themed restaurant. Well, God damn it. Okay. Um, so 1989, when Hollywood Studios opened, Jim Henson is, you know, uh, uh, in final uh, uh, before the comments get you, 1989, 1989 what? is, you said, said 99. Oh, sorry. I did. I, I meant 80. I looked at the number 1989. <laughs> thought that's what I said. <laughs> Just I wanted to make sure that we got it before the comments got it. Thank just, you, because I could have sworn it's been a long week, y'all. It has been a long um, week. <laughs> could have sworn I said it, eighty nine, but okay. Um, in nineteen eighty nine, I said it right that time, right? Okay. Um, Jim Henson was in his final negotiations with the Disney company. You know, with to sell the rights to the Muppets, he was you know, becoming a creative consultant on that, especially in that Muppet Studios area where we have Muppet Vision 3D. Um, That was getting, you know, developed. That whole area was supposed to be like a Muppet themed area. Yeah. Um, We were supposed to have not only Muppet Vision 3D, but there was supposed to be a great Muppet movie ride. They were supposed to have live shows and parades with the Muppets. Um, oh, I I think I've talked about like the great uh, movie ride, the yeah. the Muppet version before. I th- I know I've yeah. mentioned it on the Nodcast before. Yeah. Um, I I think that is one of the lost jewels of mm-hmm. uh, of time that we didn't yeah. get uh, a yeah. Muppet version of the great movie ride. I mean, this was supposed to be just basically. This area would have been doing what the Muppets do and like subtly parody, parrot, paro, being, making a parody of. (laughs) No, no, no. Just come on. (laughs) One more time. Nope. 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 Uh, They would have been making a subtle parody of that, you know concept of classic Hollywood that was in the rest of the park. Um, so not only would we have had the great Muppet movie, right? Are you done laughing at me? No, I'm not. <laughs> Just... I'm trying to move on here and be I... somewhat professional in this. <laughs> the, the whole point is that we're unprofessional. I mean, that's kind of our shtick. It's that we're bad. It's that we're bad at this. And that sometimes leads to comedy gold. That's the formula, baby. That's the goal, Jerry. I'm telling you. Anyway, continue. Thank you. Um, so the restaurant was supposed to be a Muppet themed restaurant. It was supposed to parody restaurants like Planet Hollywood and Hard Rock Cafe that have all the memorabilia. And it sure. was going to be called the Great Gonzo's Pizza Pandemonium Parlor. And it would have been operated by Gonzo and Rizzo. So this <laughs> sounds like the restaurant I might come up with if I was to somehow create a last meal for myself. Yeah. Like reading, uh, I think reading the description of what this restaurant was supposed to be is fantastic. Like, you would have had Gonzo and Camilla getting stuck in the air ducts over guest tables. You would have had um, the Swedish chef running the kitchen and you could watch him make the meals. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Y'all, this sounds so amazing. You know, there would have been clips for the Muppet shows on little television monitors. Guests would have seen the food fighting back unexpectedly. Including armed bandit lobsters refusing to be boiled. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... Those damn Muppets, I'm telling you. This uh, sounds fantastic. This is amazing. How is this not reality? This is such a good concept. You know, they would have had Muppet memorabilia just like you would, you know, to, again, parodying those, you know, Planet Hollywoods and Hard Rock Cafes. Um, the place would have been interactive, apparently. 
Well, um, I mean, not for nothing. You can, This is not to dismiss the artistry that goes into what the Muppeteers do. Yeah. Or puppeteering in general or anything like that. But you could totally, totally yeah. program those animatronics I to mean, say whatever and reprogram y'all. it and make it a fresh experience every fucking time that you came. This would have been the coolest fucking restaurant that we could have ever, yeah. ever seen. And this makes me so angry, so angry that this did not happen. Um, I mean, this just mousepinet.com did a fantastic, like, just article on this and what this would have been. Um, but unfortunately, when Jim Henson passed away in 1990, um, the contract was unsigned and there was ongoing disagreements between the Henson family and the Disney company. So, Everything that had been imagined for this area of the park never came to fruition. So this is the shame of it. And this is kind of why I understood why uh, why um, Disney decided to work directly with James Cameron when mm-hmm. he was available to do that and to do all that work directly with him to recreate Avatar as yeah. an experience. Because yeah. if you can get to the core creative person mm-hmm. and have them help design your experience, it's going to be the best possible one. Also, sign mm-hmm. the contract as soon as possible. Right. That's enough. <laughs> um, so- you know how many deals I've had <laughs> fall through? Yeah. Several, several. Yeah. Was that, oh yeah, yeah. I, I just you I need to get to somewhere where I can get to a, a pen and so I can scan, and I never hear from Here. that again. Yep. Um. So once this fell through, they wanted to build an Italian restaurant in the same location. So Imagineers were trying to come up with something different. They wanted to original. One of the other ideas was to name the restaurant Funicello's after or Annette's to honor d- the you know, Disney legend that is or was Annette Funicello. However, the reason why that didn't happen is because um, one of the top executives at Hollywood Studios, who is no longer with the Disney company, um, they don't mention the name, but it's for the best that this person's probably no longer with the Disney company. They had no clue who Annette Funicello was. And they felt that other Disney guests would also not know who Annette Funicello. Okay, all right, was. hold up, hold up. I, I am sympathetic to that type of argument. Okay, and the only reason why, I, the only reason why I am, is because there are Disney people like us who deal with this shit all the time, and get sucked in and have to know every goddamn detail and are the psychopaths that sue to get back into club 33 and spend $400,000 doing so, but failing. We are, we, we are those people. Average Disney guest, I feel like is a little different. Maybe now, but in 1991, no, no, Annette Funicello was a household name. I not only not only was she one of the original members of the original Mickey Mouse Club, but in the sixties she was the star of like all of those teen beach movies that were so popular. Okay, um, name one off the top of your head. I don't know the names of the movies. Exactly, she was in them. Okay, and. I'm I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to be dismissive, okay? This isn't me trying to do, I totally understand where that exec was coming from. Like, that's a deep cut. That's, that. like, we don't do deep cuts like that yet. Like, I I don't think that, like, Disney can get kind of meta when it it comes to itself. And uh, I I don't think that that Disney was there yet. And yet at Disneyland Paris, there is a restaurant named after her. Well, I mean, that also sounds um, more French, doesn't it? She's Italian. 
It doesn't. It's, never mind. All right. And the restaurant that's named after her there is like hamburgers and hot dogs. Go figure. <laughs> so now they came up with Mama Melrose's. They're they, you know, not a real person, but of course, this is back when we had Eisner at the helm, and he was very, very adamant that everything have a backstory, which so glad somebody was. Um. And well, so they did come up with a storyline for her and they kind of kept some of the concepts, I think, like with the whole memorabilia aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really wish we would have gotten that Muppets restaurant. <laughs> yeah. So like you said something there that, that struck me when it came to mm-hmm. the, you, you were talking about everything having a backstory to mm-hmm. it. I would like to disagree with you. Of course you would. Everything at Disney still absolutely has a backstory. Okay, let me let me correct myself. A non-IP backstory. Sure. Um I, even the 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 IP stuff though. Take Galaxy's Edge. That is something that that is clearly IP heavy. But also mm-hmm. unique to the theme parks. I'm trying to soften this a, a little bit, I guess, before I really like punch them down. But I think having something, yes, Galaxy's Edge is unique to the park, but it's still based on IP characters. Under Here, Eisner, here's and where actually, I get the, I, can I, I get finish the, my thought? Yeah, okay, fine. Um, you know, with Eisner especially, we didn't have IP backstory. Every like all of the backstories that are at Disney that were done during his time as CEO, they're all like very original and to that park. There's no IP attached. Um, so it is completely original stories which I wish Disney would get back to in the parks not only do I 100% agree with you I was about to drop a metaphor oh drop a metaphor then okay yeah exactly okay you know how much I love action movies right mm-hmm. I'm gonna cherry pick a couple real quick okay. Predator and Transformers. Okay. Predator. No IP whatsoever. Hell, barely a backstory to it. It's just Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jesse the Body Ventura with a dip in his mouth. Fucking going into the jungle to rescue some guy. You don't even know what really who you're going to rescue. You just know that him... And Carl Weathers did this cool ass handshake thing where they kind of arm wrestled a little bit, and it was the coolest thing you ever saw. Okay. One of the greatest action movies of all time. Then you take something like Transformers. Transformers, super high or, or super IP heavy, excuse me. You have Michael Bay, who is something. I guess of a creative, uh, like he knows how to do CGI kind of stuff. And every now and then, like he finds a golden nugget, like the rock, like the rock is a good one. I like the rock, but Transformers awful. Cause it had IP and it had a terrible backstory and it had Shia LaBeouf and it was terrible. Okay. That's what this is the the storytelling and the backstories are like come from the 90s compared to now. It's the difference between Predator and Transformers. Would you not agree with that assessment or am I just batshit crazy? Are you calling the storytelling of the 90s Predator? Compared to fucking right now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then yes, I agree with that assessment. Excellent. Wonderful. Even you agree that Predator is way better than Transformers. Well, I mean, there's no story to Transformers except let's blow shit up. 
and I mean, turn cars into. They do robots. have evil robots. I, mean, I do like Bumblebee. Why? <laughs> but that, why? That's like... Why do you like Bumblebee? <laughs> I like that he communicated through music. Jesus that was like the only redeeming quality of Transformers for me was uh, Bumblebee. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> there, 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 the, only, the only redeeming quality of those movies was Megan Fox. That's the only Thanks redeeming. You. Really? Hmm. Yeah. For 2006 Bobby? Yes, absolutely. If you want to be mad about 18 years ago, fine, fine. Get mad at 18 years ago. Why did you have to remind me that that was 18 years ago? Jesus Christ. I I didn't like it. I didn't like it, but I wanted to make a point. I'm just saying, Bumblebee was (laughs) the only good thing for me in those movies. Okay, fair enough. By the way, we are supposed to be talking about M- mama melrose right right not transformers okay. <laughs> i'm way the fuck off track there okay <laughs> so, so without pat's help <laughs> yeah i i we, look we took an extra little bit of a break i feel like i needed that creatively i did i needed that yeah that recharge time because wow, and i wow. just had I've just had a week, so. <laughs> and here she can be subjected to this random ridiculousness. So there, there you yeah. go. Um, okay, back to Mama Mia's. Um, what do you Mellers. have to eat? Mama Melrose's. <laughs> I had the margarita pizza. Okay, and how'd you like it? Meh. I've had better. You've had better. Okay. I mean- <laughs> That's, that's like what else i don't understand what else i'm supposed to say no it i mean it was it was fine um okay i've you know all right it, how, how about this it's next door to pizza rizzo is it clearly the same oh, shit no. that they make over at pizza rizzo or is it better quality it, i would say it is better quality than pizza rizzo okay good good um see there, there we go we can we so, can figure that out you know but Again, this is not where you go to get like great Italian food. No, <laughs> Disney <laughs> Florida is not where you go to get great <laughs> Italian food. Okay, like it, don't. It's the water. It's the water. So just go ahead and let me know. Um, yeah. Okay. It's. I had the uh, chicken parmesan, and that is definitely a departure of my norm. It is. I was actually kind of shocked that's what you ordered. I don't know. The mood just kind of struck me as uh, wanting something a little different. And I feel like I know the mark of a good Italian restaurant. Doesn't matter what, what, you know, if you're talking about Florida, if you're talking about anywhere else in the the country, the mark of a good Italian restaurant is if you order any sort of pasta dish, Mm -hmm. the, the sauce isn't ladled on there. It's, mixed in yeah if that makes sense yeah and that did not occur at all when it came to mama melrose's yeah it, it, it didn't, did not um it it was fine it wasn't good but it wasn't awful either right. and really we needed food we desperately needed needed food and hollywood and, studios does not have a huge selection of places to eat no and certainly you know for our purposes since we want to you know keep creating new content and stuff we can't just keep yeah going back to the same old places over and over again so we're right. forced to try something new by design right. i suppose this is this is where we <laughs> it's the reason why we did the podcast like this right yeah is to make yep. it hurt a little bit and it's we're, we're starting to hurt a little bit because a little bit <sighs> who the fuck bit. wants to go to mama melrose like it, apparently a lot of people because there was a line <laughs> there there was a line but i also think that, that was like a walk-up line because we yeah, they didn't have they, they didn't have a 
get a dining reservation and they just needed something and mm-hmm. they, they had walk-up availability. So that that's how we got sat. So um, we were smart about it and joined the walk-up line ahead for of the time. app. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have to wait in that line. Shocking, you know, but anyway, um, like it's, let's just go ahead and rate it. Uh, uh, I mean, on a scale of one to five mamas, how many Melroses are you giving this place? Three. Decidedly in the middle. Okay. What? It's, it's average. It's, I mean, I like the fact that there were some different choices from, you know, like Tony's. It wasn't the same stuff that you could get at Tony's. There were, like, it had the margarita pizza. There Um, was crossover, though. There was crossover. I mean, it's an Italian restaurant. You're going to get some crossover. Sure. But they did have, you know, like I said, they had margarita pizza, which is not something that you see a lot. Um, And I do like margarita pizza. Um... You know, they they do have some non-Italian um, choices like they do have steak. Um, but they and they have some other kind of pizzas as well. Um, you know, so, I mean, it's not it is a good place to get something a little different, I think. Um, but. Um, another article I read basically was like, it's Olive Garden. Oh, you mean that was <laughs> my assessment of Tony's? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, they're like, it's it's Olive Garden. <laughs> so, <laughs> if, like, if, if you like Olive Garden. <laughs> but not... Olive Garden today. Olive Garden in 1997 when yeah. people cared more about gussying up things to make it look a certain way. It's that very 90s-esque Italian decor. <laughs> if I may. If I may pick another scene from another movie. Let uh-huh. me rope in the Rocky franchise. In okay. Rocky Balboa and the follow-up uh, sequel uh, spawning off the new, new uh, series, Creed, mm-hmm. where Rocky is running a Italian, uh, an Italian restaurant in Philadelphia. I mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. believe it was called Adrian's, if I'm not I mistaken. I think it was, yeah. Yeah. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Like the okay. restaurant that, that he, is, he is vibing, I guess. Like. Okay. It, like, for some reason, I feel like Stallone in that movie would think, oh, this is a classy joint. <laughs> so um, I think that's the the vibe they were going for. And I feel like they I've, achieved like a movie version of it. Not like an authentic right. version, but a movie version right. of, of that. Right. Um, I would like to point out, we didn't talk about prices here. Um no. The margarita pizza was 19 bucks. I couldn't eat the whole thing though. Um, like that was, we could have, I think, both eaten that pizza. Was that a function of it, the size of the pizza or the quality? Size. The For me, it was more size than, I mean, it was decent. Um, so it wasn't necessarily quality, but I, it was just too big for me to eat by myself. Okay. So. Um, I will go ahead and rate this on a scale of one to five negative infinity times infinity. So you like Tony's better? No, that's not what I'm saying. Um, the food was fine. Uh, I, I'm in fact, I had basically the exact same experience here that I did at Tony's. Mm hmm. Uh, I I would just say that if you got nothing else and you need something that's not going to be like upsetting on on the stomach or something else, go yeah, go for it. Like it's not offensive, it's not great, it's not anything like I I like I would book my vacation around or anything yeah. like that, right? I will say um, I will say this. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Finish your thought. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> 
it's it's just you read off that history, okay? Mm-hmm. And you read off the concept, and you told me what could have been. Yeah, I want what could have been. I there's 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 nothing I want more in this world than what could have been at that restaurant. Yep, that's I would love to see what that could have been. I am so so angry, so disappointed that cooler heads could not prevail. Mm-hmm. I am so frustrated. Oh, so frustrated by this. It it was fine though, yeah. I mean, but um, but still, the, like because you told me what could have been, I, I have to rate this like yeah. accordingly, right? I mean, I guess we're not rating what could have been though. We're rating what I, I mean. Is. I mean, yeah. And, <laughs> but what could have been though? I know what was what could have planned. Been? Sounds fantastic. Like, I, all right, fine. If you have to take that equation out of it, like two and a half, it's fine. Whatever. I'm, but I'm also, there. <laughs> I'm also going to point out this was my second time eating here. The first time was years ago with my parents and I did not have a great experience there. So I was a little nervous going back. Um, And this was a better experience. So that also kind of factored into the three that I gave it. I gotta, um, th- I gotta think that this is like one of the proving grounds for like some of the chefs when it comes to yeah. Disney. Like, yeah, you're you're not getting the uh, you know, a job over at fucking uh, what's it called, uh, Topolino's, right. without also having gone through the ringer yeah. over at Mama Melrose <laughs> this is, first. This is the test. <laughs> yeah, can you handle the shit, kid? You know yeah. that's. I mean that that's restaurant yeah. one hundred and one. Anyways, can you handle the bullshit? Like that, yeah. like obviously, that's yeah. that's that's what this is. This is right? Yeah, yeah. That that's what it seems like. I got to think so. Anyway, so uh, Amanda, mm-hmm. I brought that couple up a few moments ago. The the one that sued. Yeah. To, Is there uh, an update to this story? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> what's the update? They lost. I mean, okay, that... like, duh. I'm not shocked. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking private club. Like, they can t- they yeah. can tell anybody, like, to piss off. Whatever. That's, right. that's the point, is that yeah. they, they can do that. Yeah. You know? And... Not for nothing. They didn't ban you from the theme parks in general. general. They just said, you can't pay us so many thousands of dollars a year more. Right. They were saving the money. Not really. Because they spent $400,000 pursuing Jesus Christ. For a private club. I want to repeat that. $400,000. Now, I am a huge fan of things. I am. Like, I'm a season ticket holder for the University of Florida. Huge Florida Gator football fan. Go Gators. Look at the jersey. Huh? Look at that. It's awesome. Yeah. Yes. There is no way in hell that I could ever say to myself, no matter how much money I'm making, yep, this is justified. Let me go ahead and spend this kind of money. I know. Unless it's to fire the coach, but that's beside the point. Anyway, um, see, there's my football hot take. (laughs) That's probably the only way I wouldn't kill you for spending (laughs) $400,000. Oh, we get rid of Billy Napier? Okay. <laughs> it's the worst. I swear <laughs> to God. No, oh, let me throw another check down route. Nope. Let me not take the kid that's really good and play him. Let me play this other kid. 
because he was loyal. Let me al- let me keep alternating the quarterback so nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, including the rest of the team. But whatever. <laughs> So this is like when Steve did it. It's never mind. It's 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 a whole thing. <laughs> I can't get into this. I can't. I can't with it. But again, I would never spend that kind of money to be part right. of a club like that. I just I mm. I don't I don't understand it. And like the funny thing is they're they're spilling the tea, right? So like you get cool experiences yeah. when you are a club thirty three member. Part of that is passes. So you get. Basically, a hundred passes that you could just give out to anybody for friends, family, clients, whoever. To go into Club Thirty Three. Yes. I need to. Is I need a friend that has a Club Thirty Three membership. Well, okay, so it's it's a park ticket, basically, that they give you, and the park ticket is your ticket in to okay. Club Thirty Three. This does so not yeah. change the fact that I need a friend who is a Club 33 member. Okay. I'm trying to spill the tea on the, like, this is okay, not even the most... the tea. <sighs> they get some cool-ass experiences to go along with it, though. Mm-hmm. One of them, apparently was actually dining in the dining hall of the Haunted Mansion. Are you serious? Yes. You can do that? If you pay them $33,000 a year, apparently you can, yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Now, those aren't included, but the, you you get the privilege of buying those additional experiences because you're a club 33 member. Okay. It to me this gets even better. I feel like. Okay. Um, you get included with your membership. Basically free VIP tour service. So when you walk into the park, you can go to your, you can go to the club or whatever, and that's the only place at Disneyland proper that you can get a drink outside of Oga's, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that's still the case. Um, But, like, you want to head to to the club? Cool. Boom. You you do that. Oh, I'm ready to go to the park. Boom. You get Nigel, the the VIP butler. I, I imagine him being British. I do. Sounds right. Um, they're at least wearing that like Scottish like plaid yeah. type thing most of the time. The vest, that, yeah. that's how I see them anyway. So, um, so you, you dial up Nigel, and then Nigel, of course, just takes you wherever the hell you want to go. This is just making me jealous and wanting to, you know, be a member of Club. Yeah. So all of this is very very cool. Like, and I totally understand why the Disney super fan would want to jump in and do one of these things. Okay. And, mm-hmm. but as somebody who was, was in a fraternity in college, right? Like mm-hmm. I talk all the time about like some of the parties and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I have like a lot of great memories from my fraternity days. Make no mistake. Okay. Mm-hmm. What I rarely talk about is the clicks and the infighting and the fucking high school drama bullshit that sustains like fucking like just ABC family shows like for at least five or six seasons, which yeah. like the guy that was supposed to be a senior in the first season was still somehow hanging around in college. Yeah. In the yeah. in the end. I don't I don't I don't know how that worked yeah i don't either like is he is he van wilder tommy boy like what 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 are we doing here right like like, anyway yeah (laughs) (laughs) burt kreischer's the real van wilder anyway (laughs) we love (laughs) burt i i like burt burt's good 
Burke, Burke can be funny. Um, okay, so you, you uh, obviously you get all these cool things and and all this, stuff, but the money that you have to shell out for yeah. all of this is ridiculous. It, just like it was shelling out sometimes some of the fraternity dues. Now the fraternity dues went to go cover a lot of stuff and there was a lot of cool experiences that I got to have Mm -hmm. as a result of being involved with the fraternity. Just like it is with, with club 33, obviously, Mm -hmm. but again, Mm -hmm. clicks form. And that's the other thing is that like they made friends and stuff like that with all these club 33 people, because guess what? You, if you are that kind of person that joins the Disney club, the club that like is ah oh, the ultimate one, like, the ones you have to be on a waiting list for and all, all that shit. Like those are your, that's your tribe. Yeah. Wh- whoever is inside there. That is your trap, with the exception of the the handful of celebrities that like Tom Hanks, yeah. I think, is a member, and like I think one of the stories is that um, he closed down the club for um, Thanksgiving one year. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Could you imagine? Not only are you celebrating Thanksgiving with Tom Hanks, but you're celebrating Thanksgiving with Tom Hanks in Club Thirty Three. Yeah. <laughs> Just imagine how much that costs, though. Yeah. Like, the, like, that had to cost Tom Hanks at least Pinocchio. Like, that's why he did Pinocchio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to know why some of these actors do some of the movies that they do. <laughs> there we go. That, 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 the mystery of Pinocchio <laughs> is solved, you guys. <laughs> look at me. I'm glad I solved it. Thanksgiving at Club 33. <laughs> I stumbled upon it. Uh, but like they, they, part of the reason why they sued Disney and this makes me laugh to a degree is that they now feel like their, their club 33 friends are excluding them because they're like, Oh, well, we're going to go over here now. No, no, no. We're not going to the club. We're just, we're going to do this other thing that we're all also a member of, but it's this other thing that's completely different and separate. You wouldn't like it. It's like basically yeah. how they're being treated. It's what happens when you get kicked out of the group. Like the rest of the group doesn't want anything to do with you. There's nothing there and holding, you know, if that's all you had in common, then. Look, the, the fact of the matter is that anybody who got into this club was going to be that person Mm -hmm. ultimately they were always going to sue if they got kicked out they were always going to be disheartened if they got kicked out like that because they're just not jobs and this is kind of what i want to spend the last like little bit of the show discussing here okay is the nut jobs because there's i feel like there's two different classifications of, of nut jobs and i would like to dissect them a little bit if we could um uh, th- consider this to be um biology if you will disney biology um okay. with, uh, <laughs> with me the the biology professor yeah I've, sure. i'm credentialed sure see i'm drinking smart water so there um I feel like we need your brother here <laughs> I feel like he's more credentialed to be a biology professor. It's not important. important. He holds an actual degree in biology. (laughs) Not important. (laughs) Not to this discussion, anyway. Perhaps it's more anthropological than it is biological. Okay. You know, if if I may, because I do feel like I'm a little bit of an outsider peeking in. Yeah. Like, even though I am a Disney World nut job, I'm my own kind of nut job. I, I, I really am not in the lane with 
what I'm classifying as the pixie dusters, which mm-hmm. is like the the Lou Mangellos of the world. The the right. guys that are just clearly like in the bag somehow or have like a a travel agency stake uh, of some kind mm-hmm. or you know or clearly like their livelihood is invested in right the success of Disney. So they're not going to 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 say the the bad thing. Right. Which leads to a lot of people just genuinely thinking, "Oh, this is good." Mhm. Because they see it on the on YouTube and TikTok and they and all all this shit and they go, well, this person who I also think has a good head on their shoulders, like this is like mm-hmm. the thought process, basically, like if they think it's good and I didn't yeah. hate it, well, then I must also think that this is good, and I think that this is where kind of the decline has really, like, kind of jumped in. We we said something with with California Adventure, apparently. Mm-hmm. Or at least the Californians did. Mm-hmm. That was a shitty theme park when it opened up. Yeah. And now at least it has some, some rides that are interesting. It doesn't know what the fuck it wants to be. <laughs> but it, but like it it at least can say that it's got a couple of exciting rides yeah to it you know it's almost like with california adventure they were trying to cram multiple disney world theme parks in a one because they don't have the space <laughs> well, so they were, to like they they were trying to take the best parts i guess i, I guess you could call it of hollywood studios for sure yeah and then they were trying to do their own thing with the that river rafting thing with the wolf mountain or whatever. I think that's a bear. Whatever it is. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah I guess it would be a bear. That makes sense. Cali- it's on the California flag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that tracks. Okay. All right. Um, you know, so it, it tried to be its own distinct thing. And they could have done it a little better because if they had done something like San Francisco versus San Diego versus LA and Hollywood versus the, the mountains versus the desert, they could have had something there. I think that would have been a really cool part. Right. And this is, why theming and stuff like that matters and this is why Mm -hmm. the stuff that i get frustrated by like it was a little thing right when i when i said it about toy story uh, the land you didn't recognize it but now you can't unsee it Mm -hmm. right no you're right yeah and those are like the little details that i'm really noticing more and more and more of like there's always like some suspension of reality when it comes to to doing anything yeah. Disney. But you get more buy-in on something like Mission Space. Mm-hmm. Because you go through the queue and you go through this whole process and you subtly are caught up to speed as to what year it is and what you're doing there and all that kind of stuff like there's shit on the walls that you can stare at while you're in line and you get caught up on where yeah where you are and what you're doing yeah right, right. and then there's that, that let's just make more cards and uh erector sets yeah Let's do. Let's use like the vision thing. The what? what the vision finder. The viewfinder. The viewfinder. Is that what it is? The viewfinder. Yeah. 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 Let's make one of those. Let's let's like have that be the projector. Yeah. I mean, okay. All right. It's it it was cute like for a minute, but like that got old real yeah. quick, and even the competitive nature that uh, I can have with. Toy Story Mania doesn't make it have more rewritability than, say, Buzz Lightyear does. 
and buzz i'm willing to to give it about half an hour yeah or so in line roughly i mean i feel that way with most rides but yeah i'm up to an hour if it's one especially if it's one that i'm targeting right yeah like you know there there are times that we go to the parks for the show and we Mm -hmm. go to ride something specifically so I will allow for extra time yeah. for a specific attraction. Speaking of, by the way, we, we should talk about Tron here in a minute, but <laughs> um, it's it's just the Pixie Dusters have gotten it tilted so far to the one side. And then on the other side, you have the... The anti Disney Disney fan, like where they they yeah. hate they they hate everything about what they once loved because it, it's not the same as what it used to be, and I yeah. sympathize to a degree with with that because I absolutely think the Disney experience was better under the Eisner regime, and I think and I, it's a shame yeah. that we're we're not trying to emulate the best parts of that instead of like trying to figure out why that one experience over here that didn't work, why that failed. Yeah. No, I agree. And I I think I've made it known my love for the Eisner period of of Disney history. I I don't want to say that everything was perfect under Eisner. Because that does gloss over some failures. Like Euro yeah. Disney was a major failure. That is the reason why we didn't get Westcott. Yeah. Which is, oh God, what Westcott could have been. Yeah. Oh yeah. God. Go look up Westcott if you have if you've never heard of those concepts. Oh God, I wish they'd bring a lot of that over here. Wouldn't you? Anyway, yeah. sorry. Like the other side, though. Like the, so, there's there's always these two opposing forces that I feel like I'm kind of caught between, to a degree, because mm-hmm. I I don't want to give up on my fandom, but as of this moment, we are not annual pass holders. We're not. We haven't renewed our passes, and that makes me kind of like. Okay. Like, I don't feel like jittery or anything like that. So I guess, I guess what I'm saying is I know I'm not a pixie duster because like a pixie duster, like it's, it literally is an addiction for uh, some of these people. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and if you are, if you are one of these people, like I'm not saying like you need, help help but you need to talk to someone mm-hmm. like just just yeah. just saying anyway i feel guilty now because I, I don't want to be too judgmental of, of some some of the folks that are out there or anything but you know who i'm talking about right it's like okay the one to, i think these i think there are people out there that need to understand it's okay to be critical of something you love listen I am, like I said, huge Florida Gator fan. Hu- I'm booster, season ticket holder, own multiple game used jerseys. Half of my wardrobe is orange and blue, and there is no bigger critic of that team this year than me right, <laughs> right now. Right. It's because they suck, and I want them to be better. Yeah. And that's that's where I'm at with Disney, too. Yeah. It really sucks to to move uh, here right when my team sucks and uh, Disney is starting to ter- turn downhill like that, right? Yeah, we we picked a great time. <laughs> <sighs> kind of a bummer, man. We moved during the pandemic. <laughs> Speaking of the pandemic, <laughs> which delayed. An attraction opening by 17 years. That would be uh, Tron Light Cycle run over at Disney's Magic Kingdom Park. (sighs) That is now 
no longer requiring the use of a virtual queue to get a uh, to get in line. So there you go, yeah. guys. You know, we're getting back to a little bit of normalcy, which there is a part of me that likes the virtual queue and there's a part of me that hates it. Yeah. I, I like that it, 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 you get a scheduled time. I don't like that it's exclusionary. Yeah. If you walk in, if you get a ticket to that park, every ride, every single ride should be accessible to you. There should be no additional paywall that you have to go through to access another ride. Right. And that's the shame of the virtual queue process is that it forced people to buy the lightning lane, which yeah. artificially floats the wait times, which necessitates the virtual queue, which perpetuates this whole thing and makes it into a self-eating beast and it's frustrating yeah well it turns out that once you get tron lights light cycle run off of the virtual queue nobody wants to go it's not a great ride well okay it, it's gotten like when every other ride in the park that's open that's normally a banger mm -hmm. we're talking you know <sighs> Space Mountain. We're talking yeah. Haunted Mansion and Seven Doors Mine Train. I'm, I'm pretty sure Peter Pan is still closed, if I'm not, or, or may know that might have just recently reopened. Um, so, like, all the rides are still at like an hour and a half wait time. Tron is still sitting at 30 minutes, I mean, which means that it's not really 30 minutes, which means it's really like 15. Yeah. Because they're almost begging you to come. I mean, I'd I'd write it at, at that rate. But, um, yeah, I bet. But like, not, uh, we don't have to plan it anymore. No. And now I I I feel like this is the the reason why I hate the virtual queue as well because now we don't get a real judge as to what people actually think of this this ride because that is the the true judge of it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not. Look, I would write it if it's a 30 minute wait. Yeah, I'll write it again. Um, But I'm not. It's because it it lasts like a minute. It's not a, like it. I don't understand why it took them forever to build this ride when it lasts like a minute. <laughs> like, so what this, were we doing? <laughs> OK, so the, now this gets me into something different. OK, they're mm -hmm. getting they're, they're trying to collect data on us all the time. Right. Right. <laughs> what about their data? That says stuff like Thunder Mountain or Jungle Cruise. Not uh, having anything to do with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Mm hmm. By no the way, IP attached to Thunder Mountain. You know. Haunted Mansion, which they can't get a goddamn movie off the the you know the show. The best one was the Muppets. You're not gonna top it. Stop trying. But that attraction is constantly getting like hour hour and a half yeah. long wait times. Yeah. So what's that data telling them? Not what they want to hear. I feel like the they're reason, ignoring that data. Well, yeah, me too. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's not just the IP argument, and I won't rehash that because we have that too often, right? Mm -hmm. And we're starting to run a little bit long, but hey, guess what? We didn't record last week, so you're getting just a little bonus extra time from, from us this week, right? The, what I feel like that data also says is that we need more dark rides. We need yeah. more C ticket, like 
people eater type attractions. We need more rides that I could sit in air conditioning. Yes. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Guardians of the Galaxy, cool as fuck. Oh. Okay? Like, it absolutely is. But it's completely out of place in Epcot. Makes no goddamn sense within the actual intended scope of the park, especially because they opened it under the original auspice of the park. Right. Yeah. They didn't open it under the new one. They opened that shit afterwards. Yep. So, like, it, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. And while it's amazing as a roller coaster, like, it does not eat up a ton of people. Well, it's still like on that, virtual. But there's re- the reason why it's on virtual is because there's not a lot of actual queue space in in there. Yeah, there's really not. Like, there's a lot of like filler space, I guess, when you do the whole whoosh thing or, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, look, huh? we're all alcoholics. Huh? Great. Yeah. Hilarious. I just like that is that's not a people eater. Mm-hmm. Test track used to be way more of a people eater than it is now. Yeah. Well, especially since it's closed. Well, that too. But like the the line was absorbent. Oh it was, yeah. It was much longer of a queue. Yeah. And it ate more people and it had more cars per hour. And like you like it was running at a higher capacity. Like that was how they controlled the, the crowds. Like that's how yep. you should control the crowds. Mm-hmm. And these are the little things that I'm going to continue to harp on because I feel like they're important. And I feel like if you, especially newer Disney fans who never got those experiences from back in the day, you don't know what you you missed out on for one thing. You you missed out on some clunkers like that stupid ass birthday cake. Like that was a clunker. I like the birthday cake. Come on. That 25th anniversary castle that's the, actually the first time I ever saw the castle. It was the birthday cake. Uh, that was such a bad, bad idea. The, the, there was some, go look that up if you haven't, or if Steve wants to put it up on screen. I don't know. It, it's, it's the worst. It's, it's literally the worst. Ugh. but like, also they, there was a separation between the theme parks and the resorts. And what yeah. I mean by that is like right now there's like there's there's definitely like a a cl- class system for lack of a better phrase. Like you do get categorized basically mm-hmm. as a guest if you are a genie plus guest or not, if you are a resort guest or not, if you're a pass holder or not, if you're a day ticket guest or not, you know, so on and so you you get categorized and sh- sorted and shifted and mm-hmm. d- fiddled with basically you know based on all all of those various things yeah right yeah the way that it was back in the 90s is like the theme parks were for everyone like it did not matter class it did not matter you know rich poor whatever the theme parks were for everyone yeah and like yes there were actual VIPs. So the princess of Diana, whatever her, I don't princess know. Princess Diana, it, yes. Wasn't she like a, something of humpbacks or something? She was the British princess? Something about whales. I don't know. But anyway. I have no idea what you're talking about, but okay. Wow. Never mind. Um, Prince Prince of Wales. Oh, uh, that yeah. yeah that, okay, yeah. There I, you go. I see what you're. I see what yeah. you're getting at. Humpback whales. There. I, yeah. Watch Star Trek Four, guys. There you go. You'll learn all you need to know about humpbacks. <laughs> That's exactly where my mind went when you said whales, and I was <laughs> like so confused as to what she had to do with Star Trek. There's <laughs> nothing. I had absolutely nothing. <laughs> Out. <laughs> I was like, <thinking> Star Trek. <laughs> the, 
there was still technically a class system though at Disney. I mean, it's not like you there wasn't yeah, but it like wasn't, Disney there wasn't were, making it as obvious as they do now. It's not it's not that. I think the resorts played into it a lot more than they do now. Whereas the the value resorts meant you got some of the Disney value for staying on property. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to pay for the the luxury, whereas you got the luxury with the deluxe, and then mm-hmm. with the moderates, you got kind of something in between, a nicer version, better yeah. theming than your values, but not quite the amenities of the deluxe. Yeah. And you know, we we pointed this out like a while back when the last time that they built a value was uh, Art of Animation. Mm-hmm. When's the last time they built a moderate? Was, Cor- was Coronado the last modern? Uh, you know what? I'll I'll give you Grand Destino Tower, which opened, I guess, in 2017, 2018, something like that. Um, but yeah, when's the last time they built a moderate resort uh, from scratch? I am looking that up. I feel um, like the newest one might be Coronado. Mm. Walt Disney World. Because uh, I feel down. like Port Orleans and Dixie Landings, now Riverside, both came out at the same time. Caribbean Beach came out first. That was the first moderate. And then the other two. And and then um, I guess it was it was Coronado. Let's see. But the point point being, yeah. it's been a long time. Grand Destino opened in 2019. Um, that's pop. No, oh, that's uh, Coronado opened in 97, and that was the last like from there scratch we go. moderate. So it's been almost 30 years since they invested in something in the middle. From scratch, not from adding scratch. on. They took what they had half ass constructed over at uh, Pop Century mm-hmm. and turned it into art of animation mm-hmm. because they already had the infrastructure half ass built. Yep. It's the only reason why we got a mo- or a value. And even then, they tried to pepper it in to maximize as much of that value resort as they could with the family yeah. suites and everything like that. Now they did. This is the difference even between 10, 15 years ago. And now they did have the cool pool that had the underwater sounds that you could hear yeah. while you were swimming. That's turned off apparently. Oh, okay. So what's the point even of art of animation? Unless you just really fucking dig finding Nemo. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also the only value resort with suites, so that's good for families. Sure, okay, but like, outside of the Duggars and Becky's family from Canada, like, <laughs> like, how many people are we talking about here? Yes, we've got some Mormon clans, but like, we, there's, there's only so many people who genuinely need the space because of family size. Yeah, I guess. And so I guess the, to me that there's just like a limited market uh, for it. So although they apparently stay booked, so yeah, well, yeah. And it's because the general public knows that it's available. And now the, once the Disney public, especially the pixie dusters know something's available. Oh, they just like they gobble it up. <laughs> they got to have it. It's like that with every fucking snack. I swear yeah. to God. Stay off of TikTok, kids. Stay off of TikToks. <laughs> anyway, Amanda, we're on social media, are we not? We are on social media. Look at you. Where segue. might we be found on social media? All right. You can find us on Facebook and that site formerly known as Twitter at Cynical Disney. You can find us everywhere else. So that Pinterest, Instagram, uh, TikTok, threads at Cynics on Disney. Yeah, if you're going to be on TikTok, follow follow us, right? Sure. 
Yeah. I don't post anything, but I need to. Really, you really should. Anyway, hey, this podcast is brought to you by uh, NotClub33.com. Make sure that you check out NotClub33.com for all the latest and greatest up- updates, including but not limited to the NotCast, released now every Friday. Now that we're back into season five, join me now for fun facts every time during the intro. That's my new shtick. Did you run out of songs? Oh, that was like three seasons ago. <laughs> Had like two different bits ever since. Like, do you yeah. not fall? I don't remember what you do anymore when when you yeah. do it. It's the sleep thing. Anyway, yeah, it, it, it like it got old after a while. I started off with a with an inter- tarot bang. So, um, you know, there we go. And you can thank me for that one because I'm the I one know. That actually found that fun fact. I know. I know. <laughs> that was so I was so excited. Anyway. <laughs> I get excited over the dumbest things I know. Um, anyway, check out notclub33.com for all the latest and greatest updates, including but not limited to the Nodcast released every Friday at 4 p.m. Magic Kingdom time. That is East Coast time for all of you California folk that are out there. Guys, make sure that you like and subscribe to this here YouTube channel and this here podcast on whatever podcast platform that you are listening to us on sure that you also leave us you know a comment down below or a rating or a review or however you want to do it why because it gets us out way more in the algorithm and exposes us to more listeners and frankly now that we're on video you don't want me exposing myself in any other way you, you really don't but until next time you guys have yourselves a magical magical fucking day